All right, so we want to create a way to render PDF files. That is, use a function that we create that actually makes PDF files for our Django projects. Now, you can use a lot of these same sort of things for Python, but in general, we're going to be doing this for Django, so it works with the Django view, and we can use it in other places as well. So it's not only specifically for a Django view. Now, first, what I'm going to do is actually just build everything show some examples of using it. And then what I wanna do is actually go over how it all works. So I'm gonna go through this guide here that we created, which is curco kk 82 g 0 um, Of course, the long form is codingforentrepreneurs.com slash blog and all that other stuff. And we're gonna go through this guide here. This is gonna be the most up-to-date version of actually getting this going. So if things change, this is where it'll be. And please let us know in the comments below if you did see some changes. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and create this PDF file. I'm also gonna assume that you know how to create a Django project and you maybe already created a blank one and you have some experience with Django, which is why you would need something like this. Okay, so what I'm jumping in here is I'm looking at my local.py file just to double check that I have a templates directory set up because I'm gonna be using this function render to PDF to have this actual templates set up. And I do, um, that's something we didn't mention here, but that's essentially how this render to PDF portion is gonna work. So I'm gonna create a file inside of this module here, and this can live pretty much anywhere. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste that render to PDF stuff. Now in here, I see that I have a requirement from HTML, or excuse me, XHTML to PDF. So let's go ahead and install that. But since we're working on Python 3, ours in particular, we need to use the pre-released version that gives support for Python 3. Otherwise, you're gonna run into some errors, and that's what we're doing here. So we're actually installing that pre-released version um, so we can actually run our render to PDF function. So now that I've got that, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new template called invoice.html. And I'm gonna create this entire thing here. So inside of my invoice.html, I'm gonna paste this in here. And I wanna notice a few things here. Number one, the HTML is not actually using HTML5, it's using HTML4. That's just the standard that they set. HTML5 might work, but I'm going off of what they had, so I'm using that. And then I do have actual um, style sheets that are written in line to this HTML, uh, or it's actually internal style sheets. These aren't inline ones, but these are internal style sheets. And I believe that's the only way you can do it at this point. In the future, it might've changed and you can definitely experiment if you'd like, but if you want to style your PDF document, you wanna have these style sheets in here. And then we just have all of our other stuff in here, which is related to our context. So where details are, I wanna actually add in some context stuff. So I'll say build to, and I'll just do customer name, and then amount and date. So amount, and then date, or let's just say today. And then an invoice number up here, so invoice ID, and there we go. So that's a, a, this should look similar to general uh, Django templates. Um, so that's a good start for us. So we have a default template, we have the utility function working, or it's there. Maybe it doesn't work yet, but we will try it in just a moment. And so now what I'm gonna do is actually create a view. So inside of my CFE home, which is my Django configuration folder, I'm gonna make a new file called views.py, and I'm just gonna be creating a view. This is, there's nothing unique about this in particular. So I'll do from django.http import HTTP response, and I'm also gonna do from Django views.generic import view, okay? And then from .utils, which is where my actual folder is. Notice my views and utils are on the same module, so I can do this relative import. I'm gonna import render to PDF, and I'm gonna create a new view here called generate PDF, takes in a view, and it's going to define a git method here which of course you can use any other method that you'd like, takes in a request, args, and keyword args, and then it's gonna return something. Okay, so 
What can we do here? Before I actually even jump into render to PDF, I do want to talk about how this actually works. Now we see this get template method here. If I copied that and pasted that in here, let's actually do template equals to get template. And we created one called invoice.html. Of course, that has to be a string. And I can actually do in template.render and we can do some context here. So let's just do context. Oops, let's cut this out here for a second and say HTML equals template render and then the context that we might want. So instead of writing it inside of this render function, I will actually make a context dictionary and put the context in there. And we have the variables that we used were invoice ID, customer name, amount, and today. So invoice ID, some random ID, uh, customer name, and we'll just say John Cooper, whatever. And then we will say amount. And then finally, today equals to, I'll just put a string of today. All of the context stuff doesn't actually matter. Um, it's more of what's happening. So I go ahead and render this. And now I'm gonna turn, return this HTML as just a plain HTML. And we do this by doing HTML response and just HTML. So I'm, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna return this HTTP response of HTML and see what happens. So now that I've got this generate PDF here, I'm gonna bring this view into my URLs. So from dot views, import, generate PDF, and I'm gonna create a URL for it. And I'll just say PDF, generate PDF as view, and there we go. So of course, this view could be also a function-based view, which if it was a function-based view, I'll just really quickly show you what a function-based view would look like because it's so easily, I mean, they're basically the same. That's it. So that's your function-based view right there in, in relation to that. I'm not gonna continue along that, but I just wanted to show you, to <laughs> show you how easy it is. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's go ahead and run the server, pythonmanage.py, run server. Uh, looks like I have some indent issues on my views. So let's go into my views and make sure that this is not indented. Let's also make sure that all of my views in the utility function is not indented as well. This is just a copy and paste issue. So I'm just gonna unindent everything and then just tab it in. This does happen when you copy code from the internet. Okay, so the indentation issues go away. I can go on my local host here and then just go to slash PDF. And what do I see? I actually have a view that's rendered. So this is just this is regular template stuff. So this is how your views actually already work when you use something like render. Now, I'm not gonna get into that, but that's essentially how it's working. It's just very similar to that, but render is just a shortcut to doing these things. So for us, render to PDF is that same shortcut. So I'm just gonna say PDF equals to well, this render to PDF stuff that we already imported, the template name, which we called invoice.html, the context that we have, which is just context, and that's gonna be our PDF here. And now our HTTP response is gonna return that PDF and we'll do content type equals, content underscore type equals to application slash PDF. Save that, refresh in here. Oop. Not context type, but content type. That's important, obviously. We refresh in here, and now it actually shows me it renders a PDF. This is actually a PDF, and it's going based off of this HTML document. So if it's a new title here, save that, refresh. Notice that it gives me a new title and all this stuff. So it actually created this PDF for me. So looking back in the utility function, all it did was that original HTML stuff and then this right here is actually creating the PDF. It's putting it into our memory using bytes IO, and then it's basically turning that into the XHTML document, which this part is actually converting it from the HTML document and giving me some sort of result here. So basically this is a placeholder for what it's eventually gonna be. This combines all those things, and then it returns it as a PDF. Notice that I have an HTTP response here as well as here. So what if I just returned the PDF itself? Comment that out, 
return PDF, and there we go. It's still doing the same thing. So I can use this HTTP response to do a couple things. I can actually return that, but notice that I had, if there's a PDF error, I just return none, which is why we would leave it at this HTTP response, because then we would just say, if PDF, then we can return the PDF or this response. Otherwise we can return HTTP response not found or something along those lines. Uh, but in our case, we actually have the PDF working. So this is a, a fail safe essentially there. Now I do wanna go one step further and that is making this being downloadable or forcing a download because you absolutely see this all the time. You see PDFs being forced downloaded and the way we're gonna do that is using this HTTP response. So we're gonna cut this part out and just say response equals to that HTTP response, same thing. We're gonna add a file name now and this is also good to add file names and we'll do invoice and then I'll just do percent s dot pdf because it's a pdf and then I'll just give some number of course you can associate these things how you might need to like invoice id being related to that but I'm giving a number as a string because uh, I'm doing some string substitution that part's not that necessary and then we'll do content equals to double quotes we'll say inline and then colon or semicolon file name equals to um, a notice the string here and then I'll do a string substitution again and then percent file name so this actually gives me the file name itself so now what I do is response and use content disposition equals to content this helps the browser read what's coming back to it. And then we return this content. Notice it says inline, okay? So we refresh in here and oops, we got a response error. Let's make sure we're spelling response correctly everywhere. And oh, the last thing should be returning the response, okay? So we refresh there and it's still coming back. If I try to save this, so let's go ahead and not print it, but download it. I click download, notice it gives me that invoice name. Now before it wouldn't have done that because we didn't name it. So this is where you're gonna wanna name the actual content itself, you put it here. Um, but what if we wanted to actually download it? Now I'm gonna do it where I have a git method to download it. So I'll say download is equal to request.git.git download. So this is assuming that if download or if that is in the URL request itself, then we'll just say content equals to, and instead of what we had before, instead of it being inline, we're gonna say attachment and still use that file name. Notice now I need to put this response below that conditional. We save that. I refresh in here. Let's make sure our server's running. Oh, we got a little syntax error there. Make sure that colon's gone. Save that refresh in here syntax error is gone and we do download equaling to true or well anything really and then it downloads it it automatically downloads it it's also viewing it because of how we have this set up right it's it, i mean if we went to a different page and then we did that download it would basically just keep us back at that other page um, so that would be a way to both have it in line with the file name and downloading it so that's it we now have a generate PDF function and this render to PDF is where this is all coming from. Now, can you do all these things inside of the utility function? You absolutely can. It's just a little bit further. Um, I like having it inside of the view because then I can handle uh, a little bit more stuff about it, such as the file name and also ensuring that, you know, if the download, if I needed to do that, I would put that inside of the view and that's where it handle that in particular. But again, you could improve this and I would love to see if you guys did improve it and you found a way to just make all of this a lot cleaner. Please let us know in the comments on the actual page itself and um, also let us know what you think. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next one.